<laughs> if I may quote Jacques, a fringe character in season one of The Simpsons, sometimes better than the deed, better than the memory, the moment of anticipation. still need me will you still feed me when we record episode number 64 of the promo front podcast i am one of your hosts bill petrie with me as always the captain of coffee the general of java the earl of espresso mm. the lieutenant of the latte Ooh, the nice. one and only kirby hosman kirby how the hell are you you know what i'm doing well uh i think it's been gosh the last for me the last like month or so i've just felt like i've been anxious and you know, there's just been so much negativity. And so one of my goals today is to have a little bit more positivity into the podcast, a little more value into the podcast. So that's, that's my goal today. So I'm doing okay. How are you, bud? Well, I'm doing great. I'm going to assist you in your goal. We are not talking about any sort of supply chain issues today, because yes. honestly, I'm over it, nor yeah, am I bringing too. up anything from the pro promotional products professionals group. Okay, good. I just can't have it. It, it brings me down. And, and then I feel like I need something to kind of get me going. And, and, and speaking of get going, you know, Kirby, you exercise and watch ESPN to start your day every day. I mean, isn't that the first thing you do after what you do that first thing every day, right? It's not the first thing I do every day. The first thing what I is do, the first thing you do? You know, the first thing I do is get myself two cups of coffee. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of, Kirby. That's right. That's right. Coffee, a cup of Joe, some Java, morning brew, some mocha, some latte, whatever you want to call it. Just about Everyone starts their day with coffee. And Kirby, it's time to tell your clients to skip the Starbies. That's right. Skip the Starbies. We're going to start that hashtag right now. <laughs> skip the Starbies and have them start their day the Logo Jojo way. That's right. You're familiar with Logo Jojo, Kirby. Yeah. Yes. They're a new supplier offering high-end specialty coffee from Folly Coffee. It's small batch, delicious, mm -hmm. fresh yeah. and roasted only after you order it. That's right custom coffee for your clients and it's fresh because they roast it only when you order it is there a better way to keep your brand in the minds and the hearts of the end user kirby i cannot think of a single way i i knew you would <laughs> i knew you would you know one of the things i love about logo jogio and ellie bath who owns it you know she's a certified women-owned business mm -hmm. but she owned a distributorship for 17 yeah. years before starting logo jojo so she truly really understands the promotional products business, both sides of it. Hell, she even won a pyramid award in her first year uh, in the best new supplier category, which is dang impressive. Sure is. And plus, and, and this is huge. We just talked real briefly about the supply chain. I guess I am going to bring it up. With Logo Jojo, there are no supply chain issues. None, not a zero, zilch, negative, negative zero. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if negative zero is a number, but let's go with it. <laughs> let's go with it. And if that weren't enough, and it should be, Logo Jojo is brewing up a limited release blend called Folly La La La, just in time for the holidays. I love and it. And it's going to be a perfect thing to add to a kit for your fourth quarter holiday gifting. It's going to have a custom uh, uh, label on it. It's going to be some great branding. So head over to logojojo.net, fill out a little form, get notified when that Folly La 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 coffee is available. Oh, and one last thing, <laughs> one week from today, or, you know, on Friday, October 1st, you know what day that is, Kirby? The, the 1st of October? Well, it's not <laughs> only that, Kirby, it's International Coffee Day, and Logo Jojo has something really special planned on social media on International Coffee Day. So Love check it. out your Facebook, check out your Instagram, check out your Snapgram, all those, you know, Insta chats, all of them, check them all out. International Coffee Day uh, from Logo Jojo. And then follow her on uh, Logo Jojo Craft Coffee. Anywhere, that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at, at Logo Jojo Craft Coffee. Great, great. Love them as a sponsor. Yeah, um, cool. I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but I have to be honest with you. I've used it for some cold brew, which is about the only way I drink coffee. And it's pretty, 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 pretty good. Yeah, it's well, pretty good. and you know, one of the things we talk about is it's great coffee. I, I, I am a it coffee is. drinker. And, and yeah. but the other thing we talk about, and we've talked about this several times, just I like doing a business with people I like, just like yeah. everybody, right? And Ellie's amazing. And so I'm really she tickled is. that she's a sponsor. 
Absolutely. So check it out on Friday, October 1st and head over to logojojo.net and sign up to find out when Folly La 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 Coffee is going to be ready and brewed up for you. All right, Kirby, I've got the upfront portion of the podcast today. I'm going to touch on something very quickly okay, and then go into the actual topic. And it's something I think you and I, we actually, a little inside baseball, we spoke about this briefly before the podcast. You and okay. I both had the opportunity to speak with Dale Denham, mm, okay. who is the president and CEO of PPAI. We both spoke with him within the last 24 hours. And he wanted both of us to know and asked us to kind of broadcast this. And, and I'm happy to do so. I know you are yeah. too. Folks, Expo is happening. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> It's happening. There's been a lot of little scuttle, but is it going to happen? Are they going to make it happen? It is absolutely going to happen. And it's going to be very similar to the experience we all know and love, according to what Dale told me. He said, the, he told me, and I don't know what he told you. He told me that the only way they're not having Expo is if a state or county or some sort of government agency shuts them down. That's yeah. the only way they're not having Expo. Yeah. And, and again, I think, you know, a couple of weeks ago or when it was, we talked about ways that we could uh, work to make it more safe and all that sort of thing. I'm sure that there's conversations being had about oh, yeah. that. I don't know how you are. And it's funny, we both, again, had this as a topic to bring up. And so I wanted to, yeah. I think that the news broadcast of it is is important. But then I also kind of wanted to dig in, you know, about you know, it is the time of year that I do start thinking about oh, yeah. going and booking trips and stuff like that. And so I wanted to kind of, I wanted to ask you about sure if you're digging into doing that, are you starting to look at flights? Are you, are you um, starting to look at hotels, that sort of thing? Or is that, or is that I, just beginning to roll After in? I got off the phone with Mr. Denham, I did. Okay. Um, so um, honestly, it, I, it was on my mind. Uh, I'm waiting mm -hmm. for housing to open up and all that stuff. Um, yeah. And so uh, it, it has been on my mind, but talking to Dale and, you know, you and I have the luxury of hearing the conviction in his voice, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's going to happen. And, and Dale is one of those guys, if you don't know Dale, he's definitely the type of person, if he says he's going to do something, he will do it. Mm -hmm. so uh, rest assured there's going to be an expo and so i've started looking at it but i I'm, I, I'm i need to actually dedicate some time to it i just don't have enough time kirby i'm a busy man <laughs> that's fair that's fair that, but for me i think it's just like vacations uh i believe this to be true is one of the things that get me the most excited is actually the planning process and kind of thinking it out and you know what am i going to oh, take yeah. well I, I kind of feel that way about business travel all of a sudden because we didn't do it for such an extended period of time that like i'm getting ready to do a little business travel next week. And I'm like super pumped about just thinking through Absolutely. all of that. <laughs> if I may quote Jacques, a fringe character in season one of the Simpsons, sometimes better than the deed, better than the memory, the moment of anticipation. Sometimes the anticipation of an event is actually just as much fun as the event itself. Yeah, absolutely. So I literally, I started thinking about booking flights. I started looking at, you know, thinking about hotels and, and then I started thinking, okay, what, what are the things I want to make sure that I get to do this year yeah. that I just haven't had a chance to do for a couple of years. So I'm excited about that. Does that mean we're going to have to go to the Brazilian meat festival known as Fogo de Chão? <laughs> Well, you know, we, that's up to you, buddy, but I am totally like, that is, I am all about the meat. There's something tastier about flesh when it's been charred on a sword, <laughs> folks. All right. Um, let's stick with PPI for a second. I, today, um, they announced some awards for 2022. I don't know if you saw this. I don't know if it's on your list. Um, it might be on your list. So the um, Hall of Fame, uh, for 2022, two folks, uh, Sherry Lynn Arson from Bankers Advertising, she's retired, and a good friend of ours, I don't know Sherry all that well, I know I've met her a few times, but our good friend Cliff Quicksell yeah. into the Hall <laughs> of Fame. Uh, let's go these one by one. Boy, I, we, I've known Cliff forever. If there's anyone, and by the way, that's his real last name, folks, it really <laughs> is Cliff Quicksell. <laughs> and if there's anyone who was born to do a job in right. terms of their name lends itself to exactly the person he is. It's Cliff Quicksell. Yeah. And not only is he a brilliant sales and marketing mind, he is truly one of the nicest humans yeah, on the face great of the earth. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, it was funny. I, I remember this was a couple of years ago and you and I had, had been, and this isn't a humble brag or anything, but we had gotten a pyramid award, right? Like, and we were very excited to get, oh, our, yeah. you know, our first or second pyramid award. And it was a big deal to us. And standing outside of that, I was listening to Cliff and Cliff had won a million, I, I think a million pyramid awards. I think that yeah. they may start renaming it the Quicksell Award. So it was like, 
the level of of just notoriety he's gained in the industry and the, the level of yeah. give back it's it's pretty yeah. awesome no question. So, and then uh, two folks got the Distinguished Service Award, which is a service to the industry to help the promotional products industry and help PPI through volunteerism and just their expertise. Uh, Brandon McKay from Snugs, great guy, uh, mm-hmm. definitely yeah. well-deserved. And and one of the guys who I, I've known probably 15 years, many dinners with, with this guy. And I think he's one of these unsung heroes. Yeah. He's not out there on social media very much. He's a pretty private guy. But gosh darn it, he has been such a beacon of light in the industry. And that's Dave Regan uh, from Vernon. And I think he is retired now, or if he's not, so, I know yeah. he's been very close to doing it. And, and just what, two two pillars of the industry. And when you think of service, those are two people I absolutely think of. Yeah, and, and Brandon, you know, is is such a great guy, leads a great team there at Snugs. And so I, I, I echo what you say, He he's an amazing guy. And yeah, Dave, a little unknown, I'm not even sure you know this, but he was my first not my direct boss, but he was one of my first bosses in the industry. I worked for Michael Propes. Michael, uh, I think, reported okay. to Dave. So I got like literally within my first weeks of uh, sales in the promotional products industry, I got an opportunity to meet Dave. He's such a good guy. Yeah, that's a great story. And one one thing about Brandon, uh, Brandon McKay, huge Van Halen fan. Oh, that's okay. Right. We'll try not to hold all that right. against him. And then I think my favorite one of all these is the Ted Olson Humanitarian Award. And that's given to someone in the industry who obviously is, is a humanitarian, gives more than he takes. And yeah. honestly, I, I did not know Ted Olson. I, I only know the stories and what I've read, but mm-hmm. If it wasn't named already, it should be named for the recipient this year, and that's Peter Hirsch. Mm. For those of you who don't know, Peter Hirsch is the owner of Hirsch Gift down in Houston, and Houston tends to be one of those locations that just gets hammered on an annual basis with hurricanes and flooding, and he will shut down his business and help everybody. We talked about the Hirsch Gift a few weeks ago about how they did um, relief for the hurricane, the most recent hurricane down there. And and they will have, send it to us. We will get it. We will get it to people. What a great human being Peter Hirsch is. Yeah, no arguments there. It it, it really is interesting that we literally had that as a topic just a couple of weeks ago, because that's what they're all about. And, you know, anytime a company is, uh, has a culture of giving, you know, that stems from the top. And so, yeah. Agreed. That's, that's a really, really good one. What a, what a great group of recipients this year. Congratulations to everybody. I, I, out of all the awards that we talk about, and we don't talk about every set of awards, but we do talk about the top 40. We talk about the power list generally from ASI. We talk about, um, you know, the, uh, the rising stars thing. This is my favorite one. Yeah. This, this, uh, what, what, the things that it recognizes, are really meaningful to me and you know it's life of achievement and i think that's just wonderful wonderful stuff all right that's good i'm so glad you brought it up please tell me you have a topic i do i do and i'm I'm, so first of all thank you so much for bringing that up that is one that i wanted to make sure we covered um you bet i one of the things that i was thinking about as i was coming up with topics this week is i feel like we've been bitching about bitching right? Like we've been complaining, ironically, mm-hmm. about people complaining. And I, mm-hmm. I've, I, I think that there is, it was, it's been warranted um, that mm-hmm. we're frustrated with that. But I'm also tired of complaining. I actually get, like, I feel negative sometimes about complaining about that. So I, I really wanted to go into uh, sort of just thinking about something that we could add value. If someone was listening okay. to this podcast, what could, what could help? And so the, the, the title was we need to complain less, but it is a worrisome time. And I think, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things uh, is important is to acknowledge that this is, whether it be social media or the pandemic or all the arguments or the supply chain, those are real things. And I do understand right. why they're, they're stressing people out and they're making people worry and be anxious. Mm-hmm. So those are, those are an is, um, but I also wanted to just talk a little bit about, and I have sort of a couple things it's been affecting me too. And, um, you know, where I find myself, my, my wife last week was like, Kirby, you are looking for a fight. Every single person I bring up, you're like about it. And I'm like, and, and she, she was, it's good to, that she pointed that out to me. You know, real quick. It's funny. Sandy said the same thing about (laughs) last week. She said, Kirby's looking for a fight. And I'm like, yeah, he's always looking for a fight. He's picking on me. I don't get it. What's up with that? (laughs) It's a good point. I'm glad, I'm glad the the ladies of our life have noticed they've really got me dialed in, 
Um, Synergy, Kirby. Synergy. <laughs> it's true. So, but but when those things happen and when loved ones do point that out, I have some go-to moves that I do to try and get myself back on track, whether I'm in a rut or I'm anxious or I'm just mad. Um, and so I wanted to know if there were certain things that you kind of go to. I, ha- I have some if you want me to go first, but it, it, the, when you're in a rut, when you're frustrated, what are some of the oh. things that you do? Uh, let me, so I don't mind going first. Let me, let me touch on what you said. So I think that what we've done is when I look at, and, and yes, you know, it's funny, we both had decided independently as we always do. I'm like, I'm not bringing up supply chain. I don't want to talk about that stuff. It's just, <laughs> it's beating me down. It's got to be beating everybody else down. But I think sometimes when we complain, for example, about the promotional products page or about the supply chain and how distributors seem to be handling it poorly, there's a purpose behind that complaining. So maybe people hear, at least in my mind, I'm complaining with a purpose. I'm not, I'm complaining because I want people to hear how ridiculous it is to be abusing of suppliers or abusive of suppliers, I should say. So, but it doesn't mean it doesn't tend to push you down into a negative space. This is what you're talking about. So when I find myself getting negative, I mean, you said you have a couple of things you reach for. I I Mm -hmm. do too. Um, I've got a a Jack Daniels. I've got Johnny Walker. No, I'm kidding. Um, The thing is, I (laughs) do. Fair. That is totally fair. (laughs) Uh, I'm joking, of course. Um, so I, honestly, you really what I do is I, I, I listen to music at an earth shattering level in the house while I'm working. So there are things I can do while I'm working that don't require like intense concentration. And I like that music in the mm-hmm. background. And now that I have the house to myself most days, I crank the music on so loud and it just surrounds me and envelops me and it gets me thinking about other things. So that's one thing I do. The other thing is I will think about what I want to cook in the next few days. Mm. If I'm going to be home, I love to cook. I love to create. So I'll think, what can I get? How do I want to do this? What does the weather look like? I, for me, I like to have something to look forward to. Mm, I like that. I find the worst thing is when I'm in a rut, I don't have something to look forward to. Like for example, this weekend, I'm looking forward to heading to the university of Alabama and going to family weekend and seeing my son. I am looking forward to that. I'm, I'm okay. really eager about that. So thinking about that will get me out of a bad mood. And I'd say the last thing I do is maybe the most difficult one. I just walk away. Mm. There's times in the middle of the day, and if I can afford the time, if I'm not super slammed with busy with work and busy work and all those things, if I can find time to just walk away and maybe watch an old episode of Ted Lasso, mm-hmm. or maybe just sit outside and have lunch outside by myself in the silence. Just getting that break, walking away from screens will help me. What do you do? Yeah, that, so those are really good. I actually, in listening to you, I was listening and then making a couple notes. What I'd written down is that one of the, the things that I struggle to work in, but when I do, it helps me, is some form of meditation in the morning. Um, just uh, in my place, uh, shower is where I don't have noise and all that stuff. It's the best place for me. Uh, mm-hmm. but the one that I, I get out of the habit of doing, and I think it's because I have to be intentional and I have to be intentional at a weird time is the first 60 seconds of my day. I, like I, what I, especially when things are anxious or stressful, I, you know, I wake up thinking about an argument I had yesterday or something I'm going to have mm-hmm. to deal with today. And it's like, all of that is is either in the past or in the future. Um, and so the, owning that first 60, 90 seconds of my day where I'm getting up and sort of being grateful, grateful about the people in my life, grateful that I've got a roof over my head, grateful of the things I'm going to work on, whatever. Right. It is remarkable to me the impact that that has for a really, really small window of time to do it. It makes such a big difference. And I, in the last you know, week or so, I've done a little bit better job of that. Yeah. Um, you know about my morning routine. When that gets yeah. hijacked, the, the good thing about a morning routine is it gets you on the right track. The bad thing is that when it gets hijacked, it kind of messes you Your up. Your whole day's off. Me. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but getting back into it. But you said something that was really interesting. Uh, manual labor really helped mm-hmm. me last week. So I actually came in. Um, Caitlin is our graphic designer. She runs a print and all that stuff. She was out. We had some big jobs. And so I spent the last two or three days of last week, including Saturday, just in listening to music, running print jobs, yeah. doing the cutting, da, da, da. And I, I, I saw my wife later in the day, I'm like, I'm in a great mood because I, yeah. I, I 
unplugged from thinking and I, I, I but I did have a purpose, which is kind of to yep. your point. And, Absolutely. and I could kind of disconnect my brain and just get some things done. And then the other one's just exercise if I can yeah. get time on the treadmill. So those, and, and again, I, I say those things, they're not uh, prescriptive, but they're things I think that help you and me. And so I wanted there to be value in this for other people. Well, and, and I think the underlying aspect of all this, it's things we can control. There are so yes. many outside forces yes. you and I can't control. I can't control the supply chain. I can't control yes. if, if a client fires us. I can't control a lot of those type of things. You know, we can't control every aspect of life, but what, and we try to teach that to our kids. I think all of us do, but what you can control is how you react to it. Yeah. And reacting to a stressful situation with more stress generally doesn't reduce the stress <laughs> yeah, just right. as a general rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, two times two does not equal zero. No, no. All right, All right. Kirby, great topic, I love it. Um, web brand, uh, they have rebranded to Mixie, Kirby, mm -hmm. Mixie, M-I-X-E. They are now going to be known as a health and beauty promo specialist. I don't know if you saw this. I saw the change in logo. That's that's all I dug into it. So I'm curious to hear okay. more about it. So I'm going to give you my perspective on this. So I, I'm sure that's very difficult for the web family, you know, but this is what happens when you sell your company to a larger entity like mm -hmm. HPG, Hub Promotional Group, right? Sure, sure. You forfeit your right to have a full say in those decisions. And I, and you know, I, I find the timing interesting. Dan Webb recently left mm -hmm. uh, the, and I think, I believe he was the last web standing. At I, web. I assume so. Yeah, I think so. So I, I actually, and I've seen some people talk about the name. Um, I think it's brilliant. I okay. absolutely freaking love it because when I got into this industry and there's still so many companies that are known this way, it was always the X line. And I've <laughs> never, that, that's always been just and I get they were sub they were generally divisions of larger uh, retail companies that didn't want to be known for being in the promotional product space. So I get the history of it, but I think it's time to really, really rethink that. And you know, companies named after families tell very little about what they do. Now I'm going to give you a hall pass here. You do use your last name with what you do. However, it's not just the Hossman company. It's Hossman right. Marketing Communications. It's Hossman Properties. Right. There was a time when you had Hossman Brewing. Okay, yep. all those tell me exactly what you do. Right. Now, Mixy may not tell me initially what you do, but the tagline tells me the health and beauty promo specialist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before, how many people could say what web was, how web was different than a lot of other suppliers out there? So to me, this is really good branding and I wanted to get your take on it. And then I have a follow-up question. Okay. Uh, so number one, I have zero problem with them changing the name. Um, if so, let's just, just use, you just use Hosman marketing. If yeah. someone would ever purchase Hosman marketing, I would assume <laughs> that yeah. the name would change. <laughs> like I, I right. just say that right now, if I'm no right. longer the owner, it, it, it again, maybe they would, maybe right. they wouldn't, but that would not offend my heritage or anything like that. Right. That's just, and I doubt Dan's of offended. Yeah. I, 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 I have not talked to him, but I would assume that's just yeah. a name of the game. Not a big deal. Uh, Mixie, uh, I would be curious to, again, same concept of we talked about last week about uh, what Syncor stand for. What, what mm, does Mixie yeah. represent? I, I haven't dug into that. I'd like to know at right. some point. What I love is the idea of the, the purpose of saying, what's the tagline again? Health and- uh, The health and beauty promo specialist. That tells so, you everything. So to me, time, that's beautiful. That makes a right. ton of sense because again, not only from the, the, just the branding perspective, but then when, you know, from a distributor perspective, I've been talking to people, we're, we're trying to manage and keep people top of mind and who we're going to. Right. The idea of just owning a space, I think makes a ton of sense in our industry. Yeah. So from my perspective, I like that a lot. Yeah, I do too. All right. So the, the follow-up question, Kirby, is what other companies in our industry need to rebrand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, it's a trap. It's a trap. I, I've got a list. <laughs> of course you do. I've got a list. And I just want to get your opinion. And I, okay. and I really looked at this, not as, no, not, not from a comedy perspective, but really honestly. Okay. So the first one I thought of, honestly, was the Magnet Group. Okay. I love, mm. that's a great company, but there's so much more than Magnets. Yeah. Now, granted, 
It's a good. This is kind of the you know to my point earlier. It tells me what they do, but there's so much more than magnets. Well, that's the challenge, though. I I, I think where uh, you know HPG was hub, right? Yep. <laughs> hub, hub promotional group. Yeah. So I think that it's not that you like. I, I would be curious to see the magnet group, you know, yeah. and it not necessarily have to go TM. G or whatever, but oh. the idea of saying it's a family of brands, that's an interesting. Right. They could go MPG, the uh, you know, magnet promotion group. I'm yeah. down with MPG. You know me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, I do know. Um, you. I thought <laughs> excuse me. I thought of innovation line. Okay. Great, great line of products, but unless you've been in the industry forever, you have no idea what they do. Okay. No idea what they do. That one doesn't bother me. I I, I hear what you're saying. By the way, none of these bother me. I just yeah. think, okay, maybe let's look at it this way. It's an opportunity. It's yeah. not necessarily you're doing something wrong, but maybe an opportunity to get more market share, to tell your story better. That's right. really what I'm looking at here. Yeah. Another one I thought of, and I'm good friends with 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 Mark and Brittany Gold Bond. Mm. I think because there's the the foot powder is so ubiquitous. You talk right. to anybody who works at Gold Bond, and they will tell you a measurable percentage of phone calls and web inquiries they get is for foot powder. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they shouldn't rebrand. They should just add that as a product to their line. There you go. Now, <laughs> see, now you're, now you're thinking, with, with thinking. Um, <laughs> all right. I, a couple here, uh, Kayser and Blair, Brown and Bigelow, both family companies, but both of them sound like attorneys. They always have to me. They always will. Mm-hmm. And again, I think it's one of those things where maybe it's time to shift that. There was a time when Halo really was Lee Wayne Corporation. Right. And right, right. Lee Wayne Corporation always sound like a plumbing company to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It doesn't tell me what they do. I don't know instantly what they do. And I think that's always a, a lost opportunity there. Great people there. And again, I'm not slagging yeah. on anybody here. Sure, sure. Um, let's see here. I've got a couple more here. Um, American Solutions for Business. I, I'm going to get lit on fire on this. One. <laughs> I, 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 I love what it stands for. Um, I, yeah. I know Justin. I know yeah. Larry. Uh, Zavadil. I know, uh, obviously, Dana Zezo. I know Taylor Board. A lot of people who work there, and I'm not trying to name drop, but I know a lot of people there that I consider them friends. And I know they're very, very tied into that name. And I do love the American part of it. I really think about it. But to me, that sounds like, I think as it's aging, it's becoming almost a meme of itself. Mm-hmm. American Solutions for Business. I think I think there's a way to maybe turn that, maybe just call it ASB or mm-hmm. something like that. I don't know, because everybody calls it ASB anyway. That's true. Right? I mean, so again, not, again, great company, great people, and it's not yeah. a bad name. It's just like, you have an opportunity maybe to to change the story Ooh. a little well, bit. Well, and maybe it's um, it kind of the, to jump in here, it's like, it, maybe it's not, oh, we're changing the name. Mm-hmm. It's changing bits and pieces of it, right? Like I actually like the ASB piece. That's interesting to me. Um, Or, you know, maybe it's American Marketing Solutions or, and as you know, where it does give a little bit more. I I think that's interesting. You don't have, when you're doing any sort of looking at a brand, you don't have to throw the entire baby out with the bathwater. Right, right, right. Ever have to do it. And then the last one I came up with was, I don't know if you ever heard of them, Koozie Group. So they used to be called (laughs) Vic Graphic. And then a while ago, they changed their name to Koozie Group. And there's so much more than Koozies, Kirby. There's so much more than koozies. I think it's well documented when I think of that name. So, yeah, I you, that, you I, cut again, out. Repeat that. You cut out. Repeat that. I said I think it's been well documented when I think of that oh. name. I think you know that's one of those where again, that's but see, actually, I, just to take a little bit of a left turn, that's the yeah. reason people don't want to rebrand though, Bill, is because oh, yeah. they're oh, afraid that they'll get lit people on like fire us. on the other side, right? Um, that will that it, it won't resonate as well as you hope, especially if you have something that's working. Status quo is really hard to change when things are going okay. But when things aren't going okay and you don't change, you let you let fear dictate you not doing something. You let fear dictate inaction. Sure, that's usually that usually causes more harm than a wrong action. Right. Right. Yeah. And what, what's worse? deciding to do something and it not work or just being indecisive yeah and nine times out of ten it's being indecisive yeah no again no argument but um but i i think that's one of the things is that like they did they did they made a bold change they they made their change and we all kind of lit them on fire about it so on the other side of that it's like it is it's it can be risky it. It, it is everything like that is a risk but yeah. fortune 
favors the bold. Always has, always will. All right, Kirby, you got another topic? Um, do we want to do another topic? It's almost time, my friend. Um, let's do, I can do a quick one. I, I've got a quick one. I okay. got a super quick one. Okay, I cool. bet it's something you thought. I just want to say, um, hard to believe comments you turned 10. Uh, just yes. want to touch on this. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it's super hard to believe. I mean, you and I have known Mark and Catherine when they started Common Skew. We've known them forever. You've been a customer. I've been a customer. It's hard to believe they started it all just because they needed a better order management solution for the distributor. If they ran at the time, distributorship they ran at the time called Right Sleeve. Let me go over the numbers, Kirby. In 10 years, they are now at 1.1 billion in annual gross merchandise uh, volume. They have over 600 distributor companies uh, in six countries, over 100 supplier partners. 11 integrations, things like NetSuite, QuickBooks, mm. Sage, ESP, 27 employees in nine cities. Uh, from a content perspective, Kirby, 196 SKUcast episodes, wow. 487 blog posts, and 33 events hosted since their first one in 2015. That was SKUCon. You and I were both at that one. Uh, truly amazing. I urge everybody, if you want to hear a really cool op- entrepreneurial story, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts, Kirby, head over to, to Common Skew and listen to the Skew cast with Mark and Catherine, where they really kind of talk about the origins of Common Skew and yeah. some of the struggles and some of the challenges they face. Just two wonderful people. Yes. They have a wonderful organization, and it's amazing what they've accomplished. Yeah, I, 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 I very much echo what you say. It, and again, we, I said toward the beginning of this in a sponsorship, and this isn't a sponsorship uh, piece, that you know, I really do make business decisions based on uh, sure. my relationships and how I feel about the people. Um, yeah. When I first, you know, we, we started doing business, I actually just looked at this, we started doing business with Comscu in 2014. So mm-hmm. um, we weren't, you know, among their first f- folks like Brand Fuel and some of them, but we were... It, it's been a while, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, making a change like that is a, a leap of faith. And, you know, un, especially at the time, understanding that this is a, a company that had a distributorship, you're turning mm-hmm. over all your customer data to them. And man, oh man, did they ever not disappoint? Like they've, no. and, and so, uh, you know, that is in, in, a, in an industry where we are so, what, what's what's the industry built on, Bill? Kirby, the industry is built on complete paranoia and mild alcoholism. And especially that complete paranoia, well said, sir. You know, it's doing something like that is a leap of faith. And the idea that they not only uh, certainly um, lived up to that, but, but have far exceeded any expectation I've had as a customer. Yeah. And then they're just good humans and the whole organization yeah. is so... I, I just congrats, man. That's awesome. And there's a lot of learnings for p- people who are looking to grow their business from that, uh, from the comments view story. So I would urge everybody to listen. All right, Kirby, we are now at the mullet part of the podcast, the party in the back. Mullets are coming back. You've got the game this week. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's light this candle. Let's go. Okay. So what's funny to me and why I keep laughing about this is I've been yes. like, we need to do some more positive stuff, right? We need to, okay. we need to have some more positive conversations. And this is a very dark, all right, dark game of would you rather. All so, right, <laughs> yeah, okay. all right, all right. We get so, evil Kirby today. No, not evil, but I, I, so all right. So I'm trying to be careful not to overmodulate the microphone because Jeff Jacobs doesn't like that. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so you ready? Yes. Okay. So would you rather have a broken finger or a broken toe? And why? I'm asking why on each one of these. Broken finger yeah. or broken toe? It would depend on which finger, but I know we're not going to get that detailed. So I'm going to go broken finger uh, because I think I could kind of isolate it. It wouldn't, I could make it where it wouldn't hurt. Whereas if I'm walking, that toe is going to hurt. I, I agree. Sprained ankle or broken ankle? Um, sprained because okay. it's not broken. Yeah. Well, again, for and if you haven't had that issue, there are many times where if you have a severe sprain, it takes a lot longer to heal than oh. a broken ankle does. So that's why I asked. Okay. Well, I just, I just put a little butter on it. Go about my business. It'll be just okay. fine. Cool. Would you rather have the flu or bronchitis? Oh, um, I'm going to go the flu. Bronchitis is one of those things that lingers for a long time, whereas a flu is a little more of a quick hitter and you're done and over with it. I like it. That's a good one. Would you rather lose an arm or a leg? Oh, man. 
what are you going to ask me next? What my favorite childhood affliction is? Um, maybe. I would rather lose, maybe. I, I guess I'd rather lose a leg, actually. Um, Interesting. I think they've done some great things with prosthetics. And okay. I would worry about the gripping aspect of losing one of my hands. Okay. All right. I like that. Would you rather lose your sense of smell or taste? I'm going to go with sense of taste. Really? Yeah. That is not what I thought you were going to say. I'm going to go with sense of taste because that might let fat boy over here drop some weight because <laughs> everything tastes the same. Yeah. Okay. That's a weird, And you know, smell and taste go together. So, you know, yeah. Uh, you're but good. yeah. Okay, cool. Just a couple more. That's it. No, please. Um, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this Kirby. Would you rather have a torn Achilles or uh, a torn meniscus? Uh, meniscus because I've known people who've had meniscus and yes, there's a surgery involved, but it's a lot less, uh, recovery intensive than an Achilles, which I've also had. Uh, I've not had the menis meniscus, but I have had the Achilles and that took me damn near a year before I felt normal. Six, six months before I could really feel normal, but then a year before I felt hundred percent. That's that I, I would guess that that's true. I don't want to recovery, just a brutal recovery. Uh, and someday, I don't think we've done that in the podcast for a long time. We'll have to tell that story at some point. Last one. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have your fingernail torn out or dislocate your shoulder? I want to say dislocate my shoulder because <laughs> it always looks really cool when people snap it back into place. <laughs> and I kind of want a picture of somebody. You know, I want to stand next to a wall and just kind of ram it back into place. Fingernail being torn out sounds like it's really going to be painful for a really long time. Whereas it's the worst. You know, I know that <laughs> I know the dislocated shoulder is painful, and I know it's from what I understand, it's very painful when they pop it back into place. But then it's like, eh, all right, let's go. Yeah, let's the, go. I've had both toenails and fingernails ripped out. Not great. Not great. No, no. I mean, <laughs> and, and that's something that's going to wake you up. You know what else can wake you up in the morning, Kirby? <laughs> What's that, Bill? <laughs> That'd be our friends over at Logo Jojo. That's right. New supplier offering high end. And we're talking premium coffee here. High end specialty coffee from Folly Coffee. It is time to skip the Starbies and have your clients start their day with their own branded Logo Jojo Folly Coffee Java. It's time. It, it, it was time actually last week, but today it's really time. Yeah. Um, like I said, certified woman-owned uh, business by Ellie Bath. She had the distributor for 17 years, so she understands both sides of the business. And again, this is the big thing. Right now, zero supply chain issues. They have coffee ready to roast. And you, don't, you know what, Kirby? They don't roast it until you order it. So it's, it's going to be fresh. It's going to taste wonderful. It's going to be packaged beautifully. And your clients are going to think of you every morning. Is there, ever, is there a better desktop billboard than maybe kidding this coffee with a mug or some sort of vessel to consume said coffee? And the answer is no. I don't even have to have you answer. I'm going to answer for you. The answer is absolutely unequivocally no. So I want to, so if you want to, they're doing, oh, real quick, Kirby, yeah. they're doing that special holiday blend. I don't want to forget right. about that called Folly La La La, just in time for the holidays. Like I said, perfect to add for your fourth quarter holiday gifting in a kit. So head over to logojojo.net, fill out a little quick form, and you're going to get notified when it's available. And don't forget to pay attention to social media. Friday, October 1st, International Coffee Day. Logo Jojo and Ellie Bath have some really cool uh, uh, thing cooked up for that day, and you're not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to participate in that. So follow Logo Jojo Craft Coffee everywhere you follow your social media influencers like Kirby Hossaman. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's right.